So that subsection of palm drags, body drags, that brings us very neatly onto um, stabs, because that's one of the things that we're doing with um, from this technique. So we've already looked at this a little bit. Um, we'll say we find ourselves from a from a palm drag. So we've got a range of techniques, and I've already looked at some of these where we where we hit in this way and we hit in this way. But something else that may may occur. Um, is that you need to stab with just one hand and it's not a super, I mean it's going to hurt, it's going to really hurt, it's not a superly well supported technique in terms of your physical structure. If you hit something like that, your hand's going to go along the sticker, it might get knocked out or it might go on an odd angle. But nevertheless they're really useful techniques and because you can't always support your hand and there's always different things you need to do, particularly if I want to get a range, you know, get a longer range, and I can't support it with my other hand. So we don't want to look down on these techniques, they're really useful. Remember back in section one, I talked about the idea of this, um, I talked about this idea of the unity of square and circle, that this structure, this crooked structure of holding the stick gives you more structural support. It's part of the genius of it. This idea of unity of square, square and circular force, which is like, hmm, what does that mean? No, no, actually it's a brilliant idea. And when you see it in structural motion, when you feel it, and remember, each one's a kinetic system. When you feel it, then you realise, right? If you try and do that, that's not as strong as doing it this way. And you can't get as much power in it, and it's not structurally supported. It doesn't have this springy triangular force that, that Wang Chang Jai talks about. And we can start to train this if you've got your basic each one energy release skills, we can start to train it very easily. We imagine our opponent's sense line. And we just practice like that. All we want is a, a stab right into the face. And we could get there from anywhere, you know, we strike it, and then we have to change because the opponent goes long range. So we've done close range, now they go long range and you want to stab into the face. You don't you want to chase them down with it coming in from an angle at the center line. Classic Shaolin Chuan theory, by the way. Um, also talked about by the song, first song emperor. Attack the center line or attack either line, either way in 45 degrees. It's exactly that principle. Um, We're just releasing force. And it's exactly this kind of um, what I call primordial each one, uh, where you just release force, clothesline, massive big structural movement. This, by the way, is where traditional Tao gets these like, you know, intense with this kind of movement. This is what it was originally. This is the primordial, the primordial Wushu that Wang Chang Jai talks about. Just release of force, limb swing out. And that's it, boom in, like, um, this is what it means to say that techniques are second, and it's not even a technique, it's just my body doing what it does. Um, it's exactly this posture, it's exactly that. And we can do it up. So you notice the rooting is just like for, a, for, an, for an uppercut. Even to like going back a little bit like, with your upper cuts, you should lean back and lift up a little bit. Hitting up this way. And if you get even more advanced, you can do it this kind of way, but I'm going to talk about it another time. So these are really useful little techniques and um, practice them, we're going to bring them, we're going to return and when we do more complex, particularly three, three or four move, that's usually the most that we do, three or four move combinations to practice our structural flow. So one question that um, logically presents itself to a diligent and enthusiastic student at this point is what if we go for that and we miss? 
um, you know, their heads here, I go for it, they move, and they start moving, you know, or they move or they stay there. Um, what do we do? So there's a couple of things, a couple of really interesting. One, we can just keep doing it. We can follow them in. Um, this is exactly the same. So it's about in section one. You know, when you throw a jab, one, two, you don't have to pull all the way back to it's much more advanced use of structure. It's advanced structure and advanced rooting, um, particularly because the root doesn't go all the way back. Rooting foot, one, two, one, two. Oh. Exactly that, but, but with the stick, just, just prodding in. Just keep following them and have another crack. Another, another thing you can do, say you've, you've missed them, just hit the stick in this way, and you, then you can change. Just push it into the, you know, the heads on this side. As long as you're in the moment, you're thinking, everything's fine. You can just push it in. That's a cool little move that you can do. But what if you miss the other way? So, um, this way, yeah, you can push in, just hit them into the. It's only a little distraction, by the way. It's not intended to, to spark them out or anything. It's just oh, panic moments. So, they just go like that for a moment. Then maybe you hit again and change something else. But what if you, what if you go the other way, past their head? Now, there's a whole category of, of techniques that we that we're going to look at later where we use the stick to drag to drag and push and pull and bully people so one of the things you can do is just release force this way so this is behind their neck and you pull them in you pull them in this way which is quite dangerous particularly if they've got a weapon if they've got a weapon in the right hand you just get knifed in the stomach but if you get someone who hasn't got a weapon you know when you just pull them in and um, pull them in release again snatch back release force and, and needle or something like that. Um, I'm going to look at all of those in another section. For now, I mean, you can also flick. You can flick this way, but it's almost impossible to get any power in it. You might just, you know, you can dink them, dink them on the head and maybe make them just for a second. And that might work. That might be all you need. Um, and for an animal or something, you might just dink them while you, while you change posture. But probably the best thing to do in this situation is just do the, just like when we want two just take the bottom out of the stick just take the bottom out of the stick from the from here and all we want to do is just just knock them across the face to make them go like that for a split second it's not intended it's not intended to do serious damage it's intended to just distract them for a moment so that you can change to another technique so go past then we just did go past and we just change into this We just strike in this way. Some of those ideas, well, all of those ideas, we're going to revisit at a later stage, particularly the, the stabbing techniques. There's a whole range of things that we need to learn from that. Um, the hooking song. The other thing we can do, of course, is just to hit, just to hit out this way. So once we've, we've released force this way, just to hiss out straight away. One, two, we do it like, well, it's not simple posture. We'll, we'll discuss why it isn't simple in a moment. Um, but it's very important to learn and understand this posture, is this concept. So, um, the first thing, the first conceptual thing that we need to understand about that is this is not a very powerful technique, but it's the principle of the power of the technique is partially determined by the target. So, if I just do that on someone's arm, it's absolutely meaningless, it does nothing. But if I can just catch them in the face with it, then it may just get the, you know, it's got the flip distraction. One, two. Um, the other, well, there's a couple of other principles that we need to understand. Um, another one is like um, with short energy release movements and big swings, there's an opposite energy concept, and that is with a big swing, the further away, the more powerful. But with a short energy release movement, the further away, generally speaking, the end of the stick is from you, the less powerful. So that can be. Those two principles can interact. So if the target, if the target is like a weak, a weak rather than a strong target, then short energy release with the end of the stick can be worth it, just just for a distraction or maybe just, you know, just clip into the hand or something like that. 
Um, but the other really important thing we need to understand is changing energy. Uh, this is all mystical. Um, changing your crystal energy. No, changing your structures in the way that you release energy. When we say release energy, we don't mean anything mystical or supernatural or anything like that. We just mean the way we use our structure to um, to hit with force. So just some of the terminology we use might be a little bit misleading. Issue force. And of course, this is the idea, if you're familiar with Chinese worship, it's the idea of fa li, of short bursts of... Um, short energy control. This became a really important, it's been a long-standing important idea in China for, for um, hundreds if not thousands of years um, according to the legends. But it became a really important political idea because it represents a way that a smaller, people who are on average smaller can issue force and fight with people who are bigger. So it, 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 in, the, um, in the turn of the 20th century it got caught up in all of this um, the shame of being described as, sick man, as the sick man of Asia and this kind of thing. The need for a uniquely Chinese physiological principle um, which could nevertheless actually work. That you could in some way generate force and overcome having a small musculature. So this whole thing about muscles versus, um, muscles versus energy or energy release actually has a really strong political and nationalistic dimension to it. And if you think, think, I'll talk about it another time, but it's a really interesting idea. Um, we call it far leap or, or um, like um, releasing force or, or, or release of strength. And the interesting thing is that there are different ways of doing it. And this is one of the things that we search for. So I've talked about searching for the most powerful, the, the smallest movement, but searching for the right way to use, to use far leap. Um, and and the, the, the higher level of this, um, one of the higher levels, is being able to shift from one structure to the next. So if you issue force up, forward, and then being able to issue force in another direction, up, forward, and forward, and then backwards. So being able to go one, two, in different directions. This is the same principle. Um, it's a different kind of energy release for each, each post. So this one is, or in the old terms, this is closing, as we're going to talk about in a moment. This is closing, because the, the um, sides of the quad seem to come in close together. And this is opening. So the body closes for this one. One, two, and it requires this use of structural structural force um, in two different dimensions. One, two, close, open. Um, so there's a whole range there of techniques where we're using the stick um, uh, at a longer range and a kind of short movement, but they're not like super powerful techniques. I want to go into a deeper discussion of that um, at another time, but we can briefly consider some ideas. Um, like if, if we have, we've hit in this way, it's quite easy to... Release force one way, release force the other to do it to do it like this. If you want to change the target and hit somewhere else, and like I say, you kind of want to keep it at the. If you can just hit into the cheekbone or something, then it might be quite effective. But if you start going lower to kind of get the force necessary to, yeah, I mean it's going to sting if you release force and hit someone on the thigh. But you know people can take it if you've been training. You know like. Um, like we do, you know, training your you, you low kick sparring, and you get, you can know, take something like that. And if you're angry, if you're angry and you're roused and you, you know, the, the joy of battle, the heat of battle is upon you or whatever, or you're afraid, you're going to take it. You're going to take that little thing to the leg. It's nothing. It's not going to stop you. See videos of people getting proper whacked in the neck, the leg by the police and they just keep going. Um, so some different, some different ideas then start having to apply, even though you, you could, you, you can change this way. And it might, it might have some, it might be the right call. Uh, I mean, I'll show a few, right? Um, you know, it's hard to control, it's hard to control like this. So if you're not going to swing like that, 
you have to start using some different ideas, some different principles. Um, and I don't really want to look at them now, but, but one, for example, is to hit in and then you change and you swing and you, and you hit like this. And we'll look at all of those at, at another time. Right? Or you could conceivably change this way and change this way. Hit this way into the into like you might yeah maybe it might get enough power but um it's right on top of the knee but you know your chances of missing a, a knee is a very small target and your chances of going awry with that I'm not quite sure the payoff is there. So we'll look at those we'll look at those where you do this kind of thing um, and it also explains some postures you see in traditional or shoe like really bring the stick out like this we'll look at that another time. So another another idea we could use is from the from the poke and then the change to the to, to the push in this way, to the poke in this way. Um, and the way we do this is we just scoop it to no, no, call it a scoop. One scoop up so the end of the stick stays broadly speaking in the same small area and it's the bottom of the stick that that moves round it this way. Do it from lead hand. Uh, the reason most of these are done from lead hand is that it's about distance, but we can, you know, you want distance from your opponent. Um, but if you do them just the same, just the same from the back hand, the lead hand first, right handed. This is a reference point, by the way. I'm not contradicting my idea earlier that um, you shouldn't be doing. You know, this kind of Errol Flynn that, that works with fencing and a light weapon because you can move a light weapon very quickly to, as you can see from Olympic fencing, not so not so easy with something like Dragon's Toothpick, I have to say. Uh, so this is just a reference point. We found ourselves here for whatever reason, and then we, then we go for the technique. Uh, backhand, backhand left-handed. You can see when the when we go left-handed, maybe not see from that angle. One, the scoop is a bit bigger than the you've got to come right across your whole body. With your lead hand, it's just a little, just a little thing this way. With the back hand, hit scoop round. Of course, you can probably guess there's a very good reason why we don't just go across the face like that with it, and why we have this concept of the scoop, particularly for. Um, techniques where the, the butt of the stick is near the face. One, we're scooping past the face. One, past the face and past the neck. No, so it doesn't get hit in your face. If you've not got that, so it doesn't smack you in the face. Backhand. Right hand. And then straight into straight into all your other techniques. So there are lots of variations on this, by the way. And particularly if you use footwork, it's a whole big sub category. And then this idea of the the multiplier effect. Once you, uh, if you didn't get before when I was talking about this, the infinite curriculum is about unfolding things that you haven't thought about before. Um, whereas the multiplier effect is about putting together things that you already know to create new create new things and um, so if we start applying these ideas with things for example with footwork things like that we can get a whole new different set of items almost infinite number of different combinations So something else that then um, suggests itself very organically from this idea is then can you do this um, can you do this poking in to the body? Yes, you can. And that's why we've looked at this idea um, so many different different things like what we're probably gonna look at some more in a moment. Um, but it's one of these one of these instances again where you, you realise the genius of this idea of the, the unity of square and circular force that Wang Chen Jai talks about. I should emphasise Wang Xing Jai doesn't develop that idea, it's a quintess quintessence principle of Chinese Wushu that's inherited from the ancients. Um, 
quite how ancient the ancients are, I don't know, but it's inherited from, there's lots of people writing about it before Wangshan. And you can see, you can feel when you've got a stick, when you push like that, you can do it, release force like that. But it doesn't feel anywhere near as strong or as stable. This structure doesn't have this springy, triangular, stable force in the way that it does if you do it this way. If you do it this way, you're using this crooked unity of square and circle movement. You can really feel the whole structure's got, um, it's not even like, like if you do if you do it this way and pushing, you can feel that's more tense as a structure, but this way it's got this kind of um, springy resilience to it where you feel like you can absorb and you can hit in and it's not it's not brittle like this. So Wang Chen Zai talks about square energy being too brittle and it's quite, it's a really obscure concept until you do something like this, like you get on the back and you do that, you think, yeah, like this is totally square. And it's quite strong this way, but it's, it's brittle, it's just gonna go like, there's no resilience in it at all. When your hand is just gonna ping off one way or the other. But if you do it this way, unity of square and circle, it's full of resilience. It's like it can, you know, there's all different ways the hand can go and it's still gonna push and it's not gonna feel uncomfortable. It's an absolute genius. It's a brilliant idea. And when you see these, um, what seem like abstract concepts come to life in physiological use. It's, like it's just mind-blowing, the genius of it, the genius of Chinese wushu. So again, from a simple reference point, maybe we've, we've hit, him, hit him this way, and we just, just release force straight in. Straight into the body. And if, and if, and if the target changes, we can change a little bit. all using exactly the same principle. And um, we'll come back to those at another time and we'll look at them in more depth and some of the things that, you know, hit and then swing off the, how we begin applying that with footwork and um, being more three-dimensional in our movement, which is something we're not covered really at the moment, but the idea that we're moving on to three, being three-dimensional in our, in the way we're moving and zigzagging using this triangle stuff. Come back to all of that in another in another another exciting episode of Each One Stick. For now, following this idea that um, this this way of learning, this organic way of learning, where we learn subgroups, and then after we've learned a subgroup, maybe move on to a bit of another subgroup, and then we learn some additionals to that subgroup, some miscellaneous techniques that we can add on to it. That's the way I've been teaching all along, and we started to look at well, lots of various. Um, various postures where we've hit in with the one, two, hit in, and use the stick, the end of the stick to point on the butt of the stick to strike. And there's a um, couple of extensions on that subgroup that we need to consider now. Um, and before we do that, I should say there's different ways of holding the stick when we do this. We've just done some with one hand. Most of the ones we've done, I think, so far have been like this. Um, we've gone from a from a palm drag into a double overhand grab like this and we can also do various techniques like this and very occasionally the other way for a, a stab down this way. Um, for the moment I only want to consider these over the top so both are over the top. Um, so again we're beginning from a reference point so um, it's not a guard posture it's just somewhere we find ourselves and we want to think we've done we've done the idea of hitting in this way. And we've also just introduced the idea of being able to use different structures. So uh, when I said one, release energy this way, two, release energy this way. Close, open, as I've, as I've just discussed. One of the other really interesting things in, in each one is, remember when I talked about this idea of the chopping hat? One, two, where we use the same structure. We use the same structure again. One, two. This is a similar thing where we want to use the same or very similar structure to release force, but one after the other. And those are the kind of techniques that I want to demonstrate, like double hits with the with the with the point of the stick. And I also want you to remember, and I'll, I'll show you shortly, um, what we do with the point of the stick this way. We can also do with the bulk of the stick this way. So I'm going to start with we've done that one, we've done that one, and we've done up to the face and we've done this kind of a little bit more dangerous because it can hit you in the face flat one this way we've even done some down like this so i want to be a little bit more three-dimensional now and start with the 
hitting on an angle. So it's a variation. Back and then hitting on an angle. But what we don't want to do, what we don't want to do is put our arms out and, unless we really need to. Using whole body force, um, we can still use whole body force when you do that. It's just a little bit of an awkward movement. What we want to do is use our, our footwork and change and hit him to the side this way. So from this reference point, hit him this way. It's exactly the same if we're using the butler stick. And just using that to get our angle, our 45 degree angle. Remember, we're using a lot of this idea, this Shaolin Chuan idea, centre line and then 45 degree angles in. This is this idea in practice. And if you can do it, if you can do it well, then you can do it a bit higher up, stab up into the face. So now we're getting more three dimensional. One, two, up into the face. That's our first, that's our first extra additional, um, our, our extra addition to that subgroup that, that we need. So. See, and I'm moving around both times. One, two. I'm using this um, kind of circular footwork. And the other way. Adding in, you can do, you can do, you know, if you really want to um, practice like this using using triple, just to get that. Um, it's called quarter routine, which is a, um, a little bit of an unusual concept, but it just means. I mean, we talk about it in detail in the video. It just means when you you lift up to root ones, but instead of going fully back into the into the start position, you go one, two. So foot comes up and then partly goes down and partly goes up. It's exactly the same thing when you when you do like double lead hand and use it a lot. Well, you use it in everything. Our next technique that we we'll use it, we we'll use the butt and hit you in my butt um, as opposed to I'm going to hit you with my mind. It's the essence of each one. Um, and we're just going to do this straight up straight up but not straight out not straight out like that straight up like this so it's more of a it's just exactly the same posture as the as the uppercut each one uppercut so again our reference point close range hit up hit up this way all of this te these techniques by the way we can practice using you know, we can do it this way or we can do it this way um, the technique for hitting up this way is quite interesting because the routing, the the, um, the routing goes back like this. It's this very much like the when we did that. The routing goes back, but it's almost like you're going to do a do an uppercut like this. Whereas normally a backhand uppercut in each one will be like this, but it's not. It's like this. So it's this very traditional, you know. This very traditional Shaolin style posture. Um, uh, or you see it, you see it in, in Dao Shu. Shopping this way of you. Dao, Dao Shu means broadsword, broadsword work. You see it this this kind of posture leaning back, so it's that. Leaning back this way. And the, the lead hand is just like release force, like um, kind of standard Yao Zichuan uppercut elbow. It's just exactly that. Um, because it's so close range, this is why you're doing this lean back technique by the way. Someone's super close range and you just change and you, you uppercut this way. Like pulling something up from the earth. So from our reference point, the other way, again from our reference point, very close range because all of these you know they're all up to the 
can up to the lock point and relax or up to the lock point and change. So they're all designed like Lego bricks. As you learn these postures, you can then add something on. So there's a couple of interesting, well, there's infinite different interesting things we can do. So we can hit in, hit in, and then hit in with the, hit in with the butt of the stick. Notice all the time I'm trying to keep this stick past my body. I don't want it coming into my thigh or anything like that. So again, that's got to just be drilled into so it's, it's second nature. Trained naturalness. Or hitting this way and saying this way. So we can just keep adding on, adding on in this structural flop. But that's not what we want um, for this movement. It's not what I want to demonstrate. So I'm going to stick with this idea of hitting in with the end. We want one, one, two in. In again to the side this way, so it links with the one, links with the one from before. In fact, we'll do a bit different. We'll do one, and then we'll do, we'll do hitting in over the top. I'll show it first. Now you can see, to get up to here, I had to do here. I can just do very short, very short movement to get to get round to do, a, to do a flat strike. But to get over the top, obviously my arm's got to come up higher to do it. So we use that as an advantage. Um, and if you're thinking, how on earth can anyone know all these things when we look at other weapons and empty hands and you think, oh, how can you even, how can you? Um, you know, some people go, oh, it's, uh, it's all indoor, it's all indoor secret stuff that, you know, it's not like that at all. That's not how this develops. This is the creative nature of each one that I talked about earlier. These things suggest themselves naturally in the infinite curriculum. The more you understand the body language, the more you're doing, you know, you're um, diligently practicing your standing and then bringing it into flow and then flow into structure. These things just start suggesting themselves to you. And I'm not gonna lie, some people are more talented at that than other people. Some people can develop and see what the next logical thing, you know, Yao Zong's almost like, like the Mozart of this. Um, but you know, there's Beethoven's and there's, uh, there's Bach's and there's you know people who can get this to different and then someone who's just doing a degree in music school. People can get it to different levels, but that's um, most of this stuff no one has to teach you, it just unfolds naturally from the from the each one curriculum. And so from this from this posture to get our to get our step, we do another kind of scoop like this. We just use the I mean you can you can this whole other Whole of a concert, whole of a subgroup of hit, and then just push straight in from the from the hip like this. So you can do that where you don't pull it back, and that depends a lot on the target and what you're doing, and uh, particularly if someone's retreating. So you go for the the butt strike, and they retreat, and you just carry on like that. It's part of the genius, the structural movement of each one that it, that it gives you this amazing weapon. If your if your your intent is in the moment. You can chase me and just follow, follow in like that without a pullback. I'm going to look at that. That's getting into more advanced stuff that I know everyone really wants to get. Um, so I'm going, to show, I'm going to show you everything. Don't worry. Um, I'm going to give it to you all. Um, this time, however, we want this little circular, circular posture. So we're going from here to here, or we're going round. In a little circle like that. Does my butt look bigger than this? Um, yeah, that's a pretty big butt, I have to say. Um, one, two. So how does that? How does that look from our reference point? You can use different steps. So we use this one of the steps that we use in, in each one where we move to the side it has various where you can do little sweeps with the the foot and stuff like that. It's a lovely little step. We can do it with that, and we just step across, lift, lift, and hit in. Other way. So we can do it static, or we can do it moving back, moving round. There's really no limit in the, the multiplier effect, there's no limit whatsoever. And I want you to just think about it at the moment. You know, I talked about the idea of Bruce Lee before. And, Jeet Kune Do not having this core, this same 
core body movement concept. In fact, if anything, you know, if, you, if Jeet Kune Do's got a core body movement concept, this is how far some people are off the path with it, and how far away from Bruce Lee's own teaching they are. Their core body movement concept is to mimic Bruce Lee, to copy his movement, even though he explicitly said don't do it. But that tells you how much they don't have this core body movement concept that each one has. And because of that, when 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 Jeet Kune Do, the old Jeet Kune Do people, talk about freedom and liberation, this is a very different concept to um, the creative freedom that each one gives you. I don't like these things where it's like, oh, this is Jeet Kune Do slash each one. To me, but it doesn't have this same physiological creative flow where, you know, if I do this, I can do this. If I do this, I can do this. It doesn't have that in the same way. Only, I'm not saying only each one has that. Um, of course, BJJ has that. They can keep creating and do keep creating, keep innovating and doing some really interesting stuff at the moment on self-defense for police. Um, but what they can't do is extend creatively and innovatively then into, you know, now, now we're going to work on kits or something like that. So it doesn't have that, whereas each one does. It's constantly, continuously creative in all directions. That's wonderful. That's, that's true freedom, because each one brings real freedom, real creative freedom that gives you greater control over your body and what you want to do, not just in martial arts, in life in general. It's wonderful. That's freedom. One, two, I can do this, I can do this. And the, the logical structure of the flow just keeps, you know, it looks, when you're doing it like this, it just looks like traditional martial arts. But when, when you put the structures together in, in flow, then you start seeing the beauty of it, the genius. That's another example of the unity of square and circular force, by the way. So that's given us a couple of extensions on our core, core stabbing concepts, and we can do them all, we can do them all, the same with either end of the stick. Now I just want to expand a little bit on um, using the stick, using the stick to hit in with the stick when you've got two hands on the stick and how we use that as a, an offensive weapon. Okay, we start to look at it a little bit, we start looking at some techniques like this where we're hitting in. I just want to expand a little bit to show a few different ideas. And, and the first one I want to show is hitting up, hitting up this way. We can break these down into individual postures, and it'll make it easy to learn at first before we later on bring them into, you know, into uh, into some combinations. And this is um, normally when we do this with the the long stick, the gun, the hand is this way, but we can do it so um, so one, you know, we've hit in maybe this way, and the hand comes out. We've hit in with the thigh. In fact, we'll maybe do that. Then and you chain. Look at the routing here. Release force back like this and lever up and push down, pull up and push, push up off the floor and also twist. So these are all these like um, unities of different parts of the body all working together as one mechanical system. I mean, people talk about whole body power. Um, but when I do it, you can see it. You can see what we're talking about. Every part of the body knits together into putting as much possible force as you can on the end of the stick. You pull up like that. So I mean, you're imagining something like, you know, you've gone between someone's legs like that and you just lift up like that, right into, um, right into where a stick should not be hitting unless someone's forced you into it. Um, so we can then, We'll combine these two together, we'll, we'll do another one where we just hit in this way. And again, they're exactly the same postures as we, as we use with the, the long stick, the gun, only usually when we're holding it this way. And you can, you can do that with a short stick. There's something particularly powerful because your wrists are a little bit of a funny angle when you do that, which is compensated for by the end of the stick because a small movement here is a big movement at the end of the stick, so you can compensate and do a much smaller movement. Here you need to do a bit of a bigger movement to get some, to get sufficient force. Um, but for this, it's like, this is like the circling and all, this, this posture, that also is a very traditional, you know, you see it in monkey staff and things like that. Um, 
We're just adding this. See the way the body moves. Everything's, you know, pulling in and pushing out. Whole body is turning. I'm turning around my axis this way. Not every kind of energy releases like this. There's lots where we lean and the, the axis isn't actually where our, you know, we're moving this way or whatever. The axis isn't where our body is aligned to, but in this one, it's right around the fast twitch force. Um, our core movement for Farley in this kind of posture is twisting fast twitch force. So now we start adding it. Hitting into the maybe inside the thigh and then, then hitting up like this. Or it might just be speculative so we can go straight straight into the straight into the um, the body stab. Another concept that's absolutely fundamental to each one is the idea of transferable skills. And it's one of the reasons why this, you know, these arguments. For example, in Jeet Kune Do or, or, or even in MMA about, about sport versus the street, whatever, whatever. I mean, most, most assaults are domestic and occur at home, not on the street in, in most countries, if not all. Um, don't see many people doing self-defence for, for domestic abuse that's, that's convincing, do you? And that's one of the reasons why Wang Chang Jai said that the first line of self-defence is to create a better society where people can live in peace and enjoy their lives. Um, fundamentally changing society for the better through one of the ways was through martial arts training. If you don't know that Wang Chung Jai said that, I can assure you that he did. This idea then of should we be focusing on self-defense and will, will, will it be detrimental to focus on fight training and this kind of thing? Think about it differently. Think about different paradigms and different transferable skills between self-defense and sport. Um, some transferable skills are absolutely essential. So the transferable skills you get from sparring is essential. I don't care what anyone says, all this nonsense about I'm just for the street and all that. Um, if you're not putting the gloves on and getting smacked in the face and just blood and snot fight training, you, you're not training. You're not, you, you're not training skills that are going to be, in most cases, in any way functional or useful. And, and even if you like training for um, you know, wrestling or BJJ or something like that, You've still got to know what it feels like to get punched in the face and then have to then have to do it you know um, to be on the floor getting booted and what that feels like before you know how to you know maybe do something to stop someone someone booting you um, which of course you know i'm not saying bjj people don't know that of course they do and the the graces amongst others have, have all talked about this idea of the need for realistic training and when it comes to weapons for example you know when we say in each one, each one weapons, particularly in our our curriculum, you know, we don't do really any weapon sparring or anything like that. Um, can do some drills if someone can get properly padded up, and that's that's really useful. But we don't want to learn. There are so many things that can affect our um, the reality of weapons when you start doing sparring and people start getting padded up that it's just not worth it. But we bring the transferable skills from sparring with gloves on, and you know, actual empty hand sparring that's what underpins our you know our toughness and our timing and our reactions and that's actually essential even for the weapon so we can bring that transferable skill in another iteration of this idea though is that the same kind of postures and techniques can be used for multiple different things so of course our classic example is um, you know lead hand jab lead hand hook lead hand uppercut elbow elbow up elbow down hip out these are all very similar postures that all use the same, the same body function. It's the same when we use, um, same when we use weapons. There's so many different transferable skills, particularly between the short stick and the big stick, and that can also help us unfold along the infinite curriculum there. Because you can think, oh, well, what, what's the equivalent, equivalent of a jab? Is it like that? And it's like, like a hook. And um, so one of the one of the techniques we have in the long the long stick is this kind of picking posture where. You know, someone's got a stick up and you just knock it out of the hand very often like that. Just a little picking, um, little picking strike. It's a very long-winded way of saying that we want to do this now. We've done that and we want to do this. And the routine for this is to go back. It's like, if you think of rowing like that, if you think how many times, as I said before, that occurs in an actual form, a tableau form, 
You can see why, because it accords very much with this. Um, you know, rowing a boat is a physical task where you need to use your body efficiently. Releasing energy is a, exactly the same. It's a task in which you need to use your energy efficiently to make something go that way. So it's going to look exactly the same um, in an able-bodied person. I mean, martial arts for disabled people is a whole other question that uh, needs more serious addressing. We're going to look at some of that, something um, around those issues at another point. So posture is like this. It's not quite the same. This is why when I was talking earlier about um, different energy release being slightly different for different things, this kind of round, partly because you have to come back up into the, or you have to go somewhere from there, so usually it's got to come up. Usually, unless, you're, unless your opponent, you missed and they've gone that way, and you can stab that way. And again, this is part of the brilliant creativity of each round. I know I'm going off on an innovation chain, I recognise that. Brilliant cre creativity of each one. You can stab back this way or um, we'll look at some going backwards in a moment. But if you do it up here, it's a much shorter, your arm's just got to go like that. And a lot of energy comes from pushing out, pushing out this way just to get extra leverage. Back to this posture this way. So you can see you can hit and stop or back into the and know what you want to do. So now to go from um, one, one, back to two. One, one, two. This hand's doing a lot of work, but also the, the whole body structure is doing a lot of work. By the way, you, you can do them just the same, just the same. This feels a little bit different. Maybe it feels like you haven't got as much control because there's more weight. But you can do them exactly the same either way. So if that's out, out and then back, what about what about strike and then back this way? One twist. So look at the rooting, look at the whole body force. One twist into this Elvis hip. Um, Elvis hip posture out this way and then change back this way. This is using the um, when people say whole body force and the relationship between whole body force and body weight is complex. Um, you need your weight, you need your weight, and you need your weight to add. You know, if you've got a bit of weight on you, it will add if you do short, sharp movements, of course, because of the laws of physics, that's going to add power if you can transmit it to the contact point. And if you do it right at first, it, it feels like you're, when you first start getting it, it feels like your muscles want to fly off your bones. And if you've got, if you're carrying a bit of extra weight, it feels like your extra weight wants to go. I think if you could video it, go like that. Um, so this way, one, two, and back. One, two. One, two. And this could be an animal, it could be anything, it could be kicks. Um, one of those pesky taekwondo people, one of them, one of them fast kicks that they do. Um, you know, if you if you are fast enough and someone's gone for the round kick, you just hit. Then, or we can start combining one and then up. Uh, I think I did that before, so we can combine this one. You know, one. One up this way. I don't think that would have hit anything. Combining this way. In hit. Just combining, starting to put these together like Lego bricks. So that's plenty enough for this section. I'll see you over in the other section when you practice them a bit.